Nutra Medical Report with Tim Alexander, the Earl Sterling, reporting for Dr. Bill Deagle. Uh, Dr. Bill is going to uh, Florida uh, today, and uh, he could have invited me. It'd be a lot warmer in Florida than American Midwest, but uh, he didn't. But anyway, I'm here uh, at the uh, in a half hour. Chris Harris, our nuclear expert, should be joining us. Um, I'm going to go through uh, a number of different things. Uh, when when I have to pitch hit for Dr. Bill, I like to go through list of uh, of things that uh, we often don't have uh, the time when there's two or three of us talking to go through. Um, and these things tend to be a little scary sometimes. I mean, it it you know it's just uh, you 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 look at them and you say, oh my goodness. Uh, okay, here's a list of 25 facts that the mainstream media uh, really doesn't want uh, to talk about uh, or really cover. Um, they don't want to tell you that uh, gun sales are absolutely skyrocketing in the aftermath of the horrific tragedy at uh, the Sandy Hook Elementary School. Uh, people are very concerned that... Uh, uh, the powers that be are going to try to take our guns, and they're stocking up on guns and ammunition. We literally uh, are in a situation where we could be uh, heading into something like a, a civil war revolution. The American people, at least a significant percentage of them, will not tolerate uh, the government uh, trashing of the American Constitution and attempting to take their guns away. They know that uh, if if we allow that, that absolute tyranny will be, befall us. And, uh, you know, the several hundred million people over the last hundred years um, have died. Uh, let's go through a quick list here. In, in 1911, Turkey disarmed its citizens. Between 1915 and 1917, they murdered one and a half million Armenians. Um, in 1929, uh, Soviet Russia t disarmed its citizens, and between 29 and 53, um, well, the, the, the source I'm looking at say they murdered 20 million Russians. The, re the real figure, um, if you start at the revolution and go to the end of uh, communism in the former Russian Empire, uh, and Eastern Europe for communism, the real figure is somewhere between 80 and 100 million people were killed. Now, that's including people that died uh, in the Gulag prison system. Okay, continuing on. In 1935, China disarmed its citizens. Between 1948 and 1952, uh, the government murdered 20 million Chinese. In 1938, Germany disarmed its citizens. Between 1939 and 1945, they murdered up to 16 million Jews. Uh, Germany, had, by the way, had been very similar to uh, Switzerland. Uh, the average German owned all kinds of guns. Uh, there were very few restrictions on them, but the Nazis uh, were determined to take the guns away. In 1956, Cambodia disarmed its citizens, and between 1975 and 77, they murdered um, roughly a million uh, people. If you had any high school education, you were on the list to be exterminated. Any college education, you were high on the list. If you even wore glasses, uh, it could get you on the list to be murdered. Um, in 1964, Guatemala disarmed its citizens. Between 1964 and, and 1981, they murdered 100,000 Malay Indians. I happen to uh, know a woman who, who lost her husband. Um, in 1970, Uganda disarmed its citizens. And between 1971 and 1979, they murdered 300,000 Christians. Um, you know, those are some facts that are very, very important when we start talking about gun control and gun confiscation in this country. And the mainstream media, which, by the way, is owned by six globalist-owned uh, Zionist ran corporations, 96% uh, of the mainstream media is owned by six companies. Um, 
another number three here on the list. Uh, the mainstream media really doesn't want to talk about the fact that a bill allowing for indefinite military detention of U.S. citizens um, on American soil was passed by the Senate. A uh, little minor detail, the devil's in the details. Um, the mainstream media isn't really talking about the fact that volcanoes all along the Ring of Fire in the Pacific are warring to life. Uh, it seems like a new eruption is re being reported every few days. Now, there are different theories why this is happening. It may be connected to the solar activity. There may be uh, warming up the the uh, kind of the in internal uh, uh, furnace in the center of our planet. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, if if you follow the number of earthquakes and the number of volcanoes erupting, it clearly is very abnormal, and it probably is connected to the solar activity. Um, the mainstream number five, the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about the fact that the use of genetically engineered seeds has caused an explosion of new super weeds that are incredibly difficult for farmers to kill. We've all been told, oh, we have this great uh, uh, expansion of genetically modified food. We're growing a lot more food and so forth. But they're not telling us all the bad things about it, plus the fact that many of the genetically modified foodstuffs have been particular, are, are really quite dangerous to human life. And there are some now that they, they clearly have been able to show that they're reducing uh, the ability of human beings to reproduce. Is that deliberate or not? Well, many people think it's deliberate, but uh, uh, if you're able to stay away from genetically modified food, and that's pretty difficult, and it's also pretty expensive to do. Um, the mainstream media isn't really talking about the fact that people like Gerald Clemente and many other uh, forecasters who have excellent track records are predicting financial disaster this year. And um, all indications are that we are really headed for a mess. Um, the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about the fact it's easier to get into Harvard than it is to get a job as a flight attendant on a major airline in America today. Um, the news media parrots the lie from the government that we're in a recession or we're in a recovery from a recession. We're not in a recession. We're certainly not in a recovery. We're in an economic depression, an uh, economic depression that has all the signs of becoming far, far worse this year. Um, the mainstream media doesn't cover the fact that uh, almost 400 TSA employees have been fired for stealing from travelers since 2003. Um, the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about the fact that giant corporations like Facebook are fun funneling gigantic amounts of money through offshore bank havens, such as the Cayman Islands, in, in a very successful effort to avoid taxes. The average person can't do that, but the large corporations are shuffling money overseas through uh, the Cayman Islands and other, other offshore banking centers and playing bookkeeping games and avoiding literally billions of dollars in taxes while the rest of us are paying through the nose. Um, the mainstream media, number 10, isn't really talking about the fact that the U.S. dollar is in danger of losing its status as the primary reserve currency in the world with dramatic uh, implications for all Americans. We'll be back in a few minutes. This is Tim Alexander, Large Sterling. Alexander Large Sterling in for Dr. Deagle uh, with the Nutra Medical Report. Uh, I've got a, another list here I want to read, and these things are, uh, are really interesting. If we had a news media like we used to have that actually believed in journalism, believed in reporting facts, 
and wasn't simply a, a corporate mouthpiece for the globalist, uh, a lot of these things would not come as kind of a shock. But uh, we live in a very controlled uh, environment. Uh, they're determined to uh, dumb the American population down. Uh, the way the globalists treat the, the average person, uh, particularly the news media treats the average person on behalf of globalists, is rather like a mushroom farmer uh, raises mushrooms. They keep you in the dark and they feed you manure. Uh, okay. Um, here's a, another interesting list. Um, in, number one, in December of 2008, 31.6 million Americans were on food stamps. Today, there's a new record of 47.7 million Americans on food stamp. Uh, the number has increased by more than 50% over the last four years, and, uh, but the mainstream media still has the call to insist that things are getting better. Back in the 70s, about one out of every 50 Americans was on food stamps. Now it's one out of every six and a half Americans is on food stamps. And the most disgusting figure is one out of four American children is on food stamps. One out of four. Now let me tell you, America is the greatest um, bit of real estate on God's great planet Earth. Uh, we have everything we need to be the most prosperous nation on Earth, and we have been the most prosperous nation on Earth until the last few years when the crooks have just literally been strangling America. We've lost six, I'm sorry, 56,000 large manufacturing plants in the last decade or so. Um, they're working in China and various third world countries. The average American simply can't find decent full-time paying jobs. Um, let me continue. Um, according to calculations, the number of Americans on food stamps now exceeds the combined populations of Alaska, Arkansas, Connecticut, Delaware, the District of Columbia, Hawaii, Idaho, Iowa, Kansas, Maine, Mississippi, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Oregon, Rhode Island, South Dakota, Utah, Vermont, West Virginia, and Wyoming. If that's not shameful, folks, I don't know what is. Uh, if you're listening to this, you're not one of the people I'm about to talk about. But the, what, far too many people are couch potatoes. They do not educate themselves. They do not get outside of the box. They, uh, if they think they, they're really in tune with things, if they listen to NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN, or Fox, and all they get is a propaganda line. The Internet is, by the way, the, the greatest library and the greatest source of information on Earth. But uh, far too many people merely treat it as uh, uh, you know, Facebook or pornography or some trash, and they don't educate their mind, and they're, they're taught not to educate their mind. And uh, God help us, because we're seeing the greatest country on Earth decay and fall down around our very ears. Um, according to one recent survey, 55% of all Americans have received money from a safety net program run by the federal government at some points in, in their life. Um, for the first time ever, more than a million public school students in the United States are homeless. A million public school students in the United States of America are homeless. And uh, this number has risen by 57% since the 2006-2007 school year. Now, that's, a, that's incredible. This is America. We're not supposed to have a million kids homeless. Uh, medium household income in the U.S. has fallen for four consecutive years. And uh, overall, it's declined by over $4,000 during those four years. Um, families that had 
uh, have a head of household under the age of 30 have a property rate of 37%. The percentage of working age Americans with a job has been under 59% now for around 39 months in a row. So we're almost approaching uh, half uh, not having a job. In, of course, if you listen to government statistics, you know, unemployment is only about 8%. They lie constantly, always. Um, you know, if you want to know when a politician is lying, his mouth is moving. In September 2009, during the depths of the last economic crisis, uh, 58.7% of all working age Americans were employed. In November 2012, uh, 58.7% of all working Americans were employed. It is more three, it's more than three years later, and we're in the exact same place. And, of course, that, that's only if you can trust the government statistics. And remember, the population continues to grow. Okay. Um, if you total all working-age Americans that do not have a job, in America today, it comes to over 100 million of us. All working age Americans that don't have a job today adds up to over 100 million Americans. That's almost one out of three of everybody, and that's counting children. But uh, in terms of working age Americans, that don't have a job. It's over 100 million. Folks, we're in a world of hurt. And um, the clowns in Washington are nothing but crooks. And uh, the most they can do is argue about how to disarm the American population by taking your guns away. Unbelievable. Um, According to one recent survey, 55% of all small business owners in America say they would not start a business today given what they know now and the current uh, envir environment, economic environment. The number of jobs at new small businesses continue to decline. By the way, small businesses have always been the greatest generator of jobs. Um, According to economist Tim Kaine, the following is how decline in the number of startup jobs per 100,000 uh, breaks down by presidential administration. Bush Sr., 11.3. Clinton, 11.2. Bush Jr., 10.8. Obama, 7.8. It's going down, down, down. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. This is the Nutra Medical Report. Tim Alexander, the Earl Sterling reporting, and Chris Harris, our nutra expert, is joining us. Uh, Chris, I'm going to go on for a little while with some of these figures, and then uh, we can talk if that's okay with you. Um, yeah, please do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, 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 these numbers, when you look at them, you say, oh, my God, you know. Uh, and, and as much, I probably read more than average hundred people put together. And even I, when I start going through so this, I say, "Oh my lord, this is how, how did we let this happen to ourselves?" Um, here, okay, here's a good one just to start out. The U.S. share of global domestic production (GDP) has fallen from 31.8 percent in 2001 to. 21.6 percent in 2011. So you know they, there's a, they're always a little late getting everything out. But uh, in 10 years, it, we fell from 31.8 to 21.6. That's a, that's enormous. I mean that is a uh, the 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 goose that laid the golden egg is is on its deathbed. It's dying and taking us all with it. Uh, the United States has fallen in global economic competitiveness ratings by the World Economic Forum uh, for four years in a row. Um, there are four major U.S. banks that each have more than $40 trillion of exposure to derivatives. Uh, why we have allowed that to happen is just, you know, a uh, hundred years ago, we allowed the mostly foreign crooks uh, headed by the Rothschild Empire to set up the Federal Reserve System. 
And since then, if you look at the graphs, inflation's gone up and, and the value of the dollar has gone down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, by every criteria. We didn't have income tax before we had the Federal Reserve System. And, of course, we never had all the wars and stuff. Now we're – I can't even tell you how many wars we're in, how many places are we killing people with drones and aircraft and people. Let me continue. In 2000, there were over 17 million Americans working in manufacturing. Now there's less than 12 million. And again, in those 13 years, the population grew rather dramatically. Um, According to Pew Research Center, 61% of all Americans were middle income back in 71. Today, only 51% of Americans are. Um... 85%, according to Pew Research Center, 85% of all middle-class Americans say it's harder to maintain a middle-class standard of living today than it was 10 years ago. Um, 62% of all middle-class Americans say they've had to reduce household spending just over the last year and significantly. Right now, uh, 48% of of all Americans are either considered to be low income or living in poverty. 48%, roughly half uh, of Americans are living in poverty or low income. Unbelievable, unacceptable. How have we allowed this to happen? Um, Approximately 57% of all children in the United States are living in homes that are considered to be either low income or impoverished. And again, remember, one out of four children in America are now on food stamps. God help us. How have we allowed these crooks to do this to us? Uh, According to one survey, 77% of all Americans are now living paycheck to paycheck, at least part of the time. Well, hell yes, we are. You can barely keep your nose above water. Um, Back in 1950, the year I was born, more than 80% of all men in the United States have had jobs. Today, less than 65%, less than 65% of all men in the United States have jobs. (laughs) Right there, you know, the average amount of time that an unemployed worker stays out of work in the United States is 40 weeks. That, by the way, is not correct because that's based on unemployment figures that you drop off the the scale after 40 weeks. So who knows what the total time is? Uh, Approximately one out of every four American workers makes $10 an hour or less. Try to raise a family on $10 an hour. You can't do it. Heck, you can hardly put food on the table. Um, According to the U.S. Census, an all-time record, 49% of all Americans live in a home where at least one person receives financial assistance from the federal government. Back in 1983, that number was less than 30%. We're talking Social Security and everything else. Um, Now over 100 million Americans are in the enrolled in at least one welfare program run by the federal government, and that doesn't count Social Security or Medicare. Um, you know, it's just, how have we, how have we allowed this to happen? Um, you know, okay, yeah, here's another one. USA Today, Americans have seen their water bills triple by uh, over the last 12 years. Electric bills have risen faster than the overall rate of inflation for the last five years in a row. Um, uh, right now, 25 million American adults are living with their parents, basically because they have no place else to go. Um, and as the economy slowed down, so has the number of mar- marriages. Only 51% of all Americans that are at least 18 years old are currently married. Back in 1960, it was 72%. Um, people literally, um, it's the, the times are so bad, they can't afford to get married. Uh, they're living at home. They're, they're scraping by. They're working part-time jobs. I know people that have worked three part-time jobs just to try to barely keep their, their, their nose above water and to be able to eat. Um, right now, it's only 24.6% of all jobs in the United States are considered good jobs. That's less than a fourth of all jobs in the United States are considered to be good jobs. 
good Lord, how did we let this happen? You know, and these clowns in Washington, what do they get, a hundred and some thousand a year for being a senator or a congressman and all the money they can steal? And they raise millions of dollars. Some little twerpy congressman from Podunk Nowhere manages to raise a couple million dollars a year for his reelection. Well, all he's doing is selling himself. I mean, uh, he's, he's, our Congress critters are the most expensive prostitutes on earth. Um, 61% of all Americans were covered by uh, employment-based health insurance, now only 55.1%. And, of course, Obamacare is going to mean that a large number of people that were working part or full-time jobs will now be working part-time jobs. Um, the student loan debt has now uh, passed the $1 trillion market. What happens is kids are in school, they can't get a job, they say, oh, my Lord, I've got all this debt, and I can't declare bankruptcy to get out of it. Well, I'll go get a master's or a doctorate. Maybe I'll have better luck getting a job then. So they, they, they build up even more debt and more debt and more debt. And things aren't getting better, it's getting worse. People are you know, hopeful. Well, well, maybe next year things will be better. Well, next year it ends up being worse. Um, and one of the problems is, you know, like one out of every seven Americans has at least 10, 10 credit cards. Folks, take your credit cards and cut them up and throw them away as best you can because they are a trap. Um, uh, California, which is things always start in California and move across the rest of the country. Uh, business executives have rank, ranked California as the worst state in America to do business for eight years in a row. Um, in the city of Detroit, over 50% of all children are living in poverty. Close to 50% of all adults are functionally illiterate. If so bad in Detroit, there are places the police will not go to. Or if they do go, it may be the next day or something. They're afraid to go in a lot of places. The police have actually warned people to stay out of Detroit that it's not safe. And there are areas where the local corner drug dealers and the gangs say, we are the police. If you have a problem, you come see us. How? How in America that George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and all these guys found it? How have we let this happen? We've let the criminals take over. We'll be back in a minute. Tim Alexander, Chris Harris. Medical Report, Tim Alexander, Lord Sterling, and Chris Harris. Well, Chris, uh, we covered uh, several points uh, uh, off the air. Uh, I tell you, it's just amazing. I'm, I'm 62 years old. I remember the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, 80s, and so forth. In the 50s, we weren't quite so rich, but we were working on it. In the 60s and the 70s, we had so much, and there was no crime. I mean, uh, I remember as a kid, the side door was unlocked. The, the milkman came in two or three times a week. You left a note on the refrigerator, which we always called the icebox, and you told him what you wanted and put a few pennies or, you know, a dollar out for a, a quart of uh, milk and some ice cream and stuff, and he left you the change. You didn't worry about the door being unlocked. The meter reader came once a month, opened the door, yelled, meter reader, walked in, walked down in the cellar and read the meter. If he tried that today, he'd be dead. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Um, perhaps during during those time periods, you know, we were being put to sleep and building the debt for that which uh, could never be repaid. You know, by being offered the, I say, the candy of the of the well, basically of the Federal Reserve and the banks. You know, at that point, and and now it's all come home to roost. And we really should have we should have we should have seen it coming back then too. Because it was coming. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. Feel, you know, feel that, you know, it was a little out of my area. However, I, I am a student of uh, history also, and so uh, we were offered all the all the goodies, and and we went for it and we took it. And in, in my opinion, uh, we're seeing a lot of the uh, the negative effects of it at this point. 
And, but, and, but then again, there were, there were people way, way before us that were warning of such, and it's turning out that they were correct. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel sorry for the kids. I, I teach at the college level, and, and I, uh, I have these kids, and I, I, I'm in the American Midwest, Evansonian, and I asked many of my students, I said, okay, look, if you really went out and, and, and gave it everything you had, do you think you'd get a $10 an hour job, a full-time $10 an hour job? And almost all of them say, no. Now, $10 an hour, that's $400 a week if... Uh, uh, no, yeah, yeah, four hundred, four hundred dollars a week if you have forty hour a week jump. That's not much. Try, try to raise a family on that. Try to buy a house and a car and clothing and you know everything you need. And they can't get it. They can't get it. Yet they're in college racking up debt, trying to get better educated so they can get a job. But the trouble is, once they get those degrees, well, it's back to the mall. So looking for a job at Sears or J.C. Penney or God knows where. And it didn't used to be that way. Of course, you know, uh, I remember when you went to a shopping mall, uh, probably 98% of everything in that mall was made in the United States. Now you go to the average shopping mall, and not even five percent is made in the United States. Everything has been shipped over to where they can exploit cheaper labor, and that's yeah. exactly what, what has happened. I mean, it's, it's happened in my industry. I mean, my first industry, I was a merchant marine engineer, and uh, we watched that industry. All all of the American U.S. flag shipping companies would sell the ships to foreign flaggers because they were a cheaper crew. And we didn't work foreign flag; we worked U.S. flag carrying ships. We were that was an industry that basically built built the United States, you know, by by bringing trade and and, and able to uh, you know carry goods back and forth. And we watched it dwindle away and going to the lowest bidder at that point. So yeah, we've seen it back in the you know early eighties. That's that's pretty much uh, watched the decline of, of an industry, and it, and everything else followed. You remember when corporations were doing the buzzwords downsizing or right sizing? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's also part of it too, and it just followed like dominoes, one right after the other. And so, as I said, a little out of my area, but uh, you know, for discussion on the show, but it. We, you and I have both lived it, and uh, if you want to embellish on that, you certainly can see. And uh, also, watch uh, factories. People said, oh, the factories here will never go away. I saw <laughs> right here there are empty fields where factories, including GM, Chrysler, used to be. Yeah. And that's a pretty scary thing, too. Where are they? Well, Where since are they? The, the, the industrial age began... Uh, which was basically uh, started in England. But since the Industrial Age began in the 1700s, uh, a country has to have a broad and deep uh, industrial base or it is basically on the... It's already doomed or on the road to doom. And uh, we have denuded ourselves of most of our industrial capacity. It's now sitting in the People's Republic of China and Vietnam and Mexico and all kind of third world countries that have zero uh, or close to zero environmental concerns, uh, costs built in, health costs, et cetera, et cetera. In many of these places, the people are treated little better than slaves and given a few pennies a day. And you Americans can't compete on that basis. We can beat anybody at any game, but it's got to be a fair playing field. Uh, and the yeah. bankers did this. The politicians, which are owned by the bankers, did this. Uh, back uh, 14 uh, and 15 years ago when I was setting up uh, what was going to be uh, the fourth evening uh, newscast uh, nationwide, I was dealing with a lot of investment bankers. And uh, it didn't really apply to me because we were going to have a lot of people overseas anyway, uh, the news bureaus and so forth. But um, I was dealing with most of the investment bankers in New York and some on the West Coast, some in Boston. 
And it was fascinating because I, I kept plugged in and, and what was going on. And people that brought uh, businesses to them for funding and so forth, they were all told, well, we want to see your offshore plan. How are you going to offshore uh, your manufacturing a year or two years down the road? And it was, uh, it was dictated by the bigwigs on Wall Street that the jobs were going to be shipped overseas. And that is, is economic treason, and it's got us to where we're at today. We're, we're living off the past. We're living off the, 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 what America used to be in our minds. America is rapidly a, a third world country, or as one uh, writer said, it's, a, it's the world's first fourth world country. That is, it used to be a, uh, a third, uh, first world country. It doesn't have quite the, the petty corruption yet uh, that some third world countries have. If a cop pulls you over for a speeding ticket, chances are he's not going to take 10 bucks, uh, you know, like they do in many countries. But at the highest levels, in Congress and so forth, it's totally corrupt, 100%. It's just unbelievable uh, how we have allowed this to happen. And now they want to take our guns away. And God help us. Uh, you know, when the Second Amendment is not about hunting, it's not about uh, if somebody breaks in your house, you should have something to be able to blow them away. The Second Amendment, if you read what all the founding fathers that wrote the Second Amendment and started this country and wrote the Constitution, if you read what they say, the Second Amendment is so that the unorganized militia, that is all adult men, have military-type weapons to protect the country from the government to protect us from tyranny because these were revolutionaries who fought the English and as a Scotsman I can tell you man the English are, are a rotten bunch and uh, we fought the English and we won and and our founding fathers who have a great deal of respect for it they wanted to set stuff up so that a hundred years two hundred years three hundred years down the road uh, the country would survive and would not fail and the people would have the ability to say no, we're not your slave. You don't own us. We are citizens. You work for us, Mr. Senator, Mr. Congressman, Mr. President, Mr. Governor, whatever. We are not your slaves, Mr. Banker. You don't own us. We own this country, not you. And uh, this, this drive to strip us of our gun rights, that's the scariest thing. Hitler had to take the guns away before he could kill everybody. So did Stalin, so did Lenin, so did Pol Pot, so did all these characters. Yeah, and they need to take away the, the need to defend ourselves so that they can plunder the rest of us. And yes. That's the bottom line. That's, that's, you got to stop that. Well, folks, uh, thanks for listening to us. Uh, hope it wasn't too depressing, some of the things I went over. But they, it needs to be said. Uh, most importantly, get right with God. God bless. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.